Welcome back to another episode of the Rough Cut Club. I am your host, Joey Nicotra, here in the hot seat in the booth with my main man, Mr. Shane Reitzammer. Shane, how are you today, dog? Bro, I am good. Feeling a lot better. I was sick this yeah. weekend. Uh, by the way, not contagious. I won't try to Thank cough you for on that. you during this episode. That's awesome, man. I just came off of, I did, I, I think I worked 42 hours and three days mm. uh, this last weekend. Did my third volume wall production. It was fire. Um, I'm feeling much more confident about doing volume wall like DP work. It's Let's just go. a different beast. But Let's yeah, go. man, I'm getting, I'm getting my reps in right now, dude. I'm stoked. So yeah. we're talking about all things short form content today, the pros, the cons, the good, bad, and the ugly, you know, does it take away from the art form? Does it create new jobs and opportunities? Does it help connect us? Does it help sell products? Um, all things that it's, you know, if you are somebody who is creating short form content or wondering if you should jump into the short form content game, I think will be a value to you. Yeah, and just to clarify too, when we're talking about short form, we're talking what, 60 seconds or less? Yeah. Things that are going on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube shorts, anywhere where social or short form content is consumed, we're considering that short form content in this episode of the Rough Cut Club. And if you are a listener with us for the first time, this is a podcast where we talk all things on the art and business of filmmaking, bringing in industry leaders from around the world to talk filmmaking and sometimes kicking back some opinions of our own. All right, man. So short form content, it is here to stay, but we're going to jump into all things, man. Before we get this going, I just got to know, like, I want you to just define your relationship with short form content for me, uh, just to just to set the stage on on how you view it, how you interact with it, how you use it. Uh, what's your relationship like with short form, bro? It sucks. I <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but for the people that are uh, listening to this episode, I am smiling. Uh, I think it's a two edged sword, and I am wearing a Western shirt today because I think it's the wild, wild west of filmmaking right now, along with. I, AI, right? I feel like AI and short form content. And I think those two are going to be going hand in hand. My relationship with it, um, obviously with our company, you know, uh, we have clients that, that are using short form content in their marketing strategy, their brand strategy for posting, uh, you know, to their uh, social channels to build that brand equity, brand awareness. I, I call it top of mind, you know, marketing because you, it's like Nike. You need to be everywhere, right? Apple, like we, you need to be on billboards. You need to be on people's social feeds. You need to be in their email box. You need to be in their dreams, right? So, uh, so our relationship is, you know, we're already using it and servicing our clients for it. Um, and then even our personal brands, you know, with the Rough Cut Club, obviously, and and Cinema Story, and even our own uh, personal, you know, IG, you as a DP uh, freelancer, you know, we utilize it. So um, I see value, uh, but I have very strong opinions uh, on the other side of the actual value of it. When what you about you? Yeah. So I think that it is a necessary evil. Um, it's one of those things that, you know, I while while it is a <clears throat> a necessary evil, there's been a lot of good that has come from it, but there's also been a lot of not good stuff that's come from it. Um, and so it's just you know, like you said, it's a double edged sword. And so I I think that you know one of the beautiful things that it's done is it's given people who would not normally have an opportunity um, to do certain to create certain businesses to you know live a certain lifestyle to be able to tap into that. Like when our, you know, parents generation never had access to that. They never were able to create their own platforms. Like even the rough cut club, like we couldn't have had, you know, a, a podcasting platform several years ago without short form content and, and even just like the ease of access to creating, you know, a type of like radio show. And so there are certain like beautiful things that have come from it. But on the other hand, like it has changed filmmaking and like cinematography and storytelling in, in a way that is, you know, when you're in love with the art form, it makes it, uh, it, there's a sadness to it, you know, because 
Yeah. I'm surprised you're not wearing your make video horizontal again. <laughs> Honestly, Matt. that was a missed opportunity, <laughs> bro. Yeah, dude, I think you nailed it. You said it so much better. And I agree. Like there, there's a lot of positives. There's a lot of negatives. I'm excited to unpack even the experience for the viewer, right? Yeah. Like misinformation, right? Yeah. Think about, uh, you know, all the the scams and influencers Gosh. that are total, you know, hoax yeah. and you know, there there's there but at the other side of the coin, you know, to your point, there's like there is a new platform to sell your coaching brand because you do have value to provide to somebody, right? right. So it really kind of falls on the viewer, you know, right. the viewer beware, right? Like well, and it's who you follow, you know, yeah. there's there's a lot of I, I even think about like how, you know, dare I say educated I've gotten from following certain people, but it's like, in, in all honesty, you know, education back in the day came from either mentorship or reading books, you know what I mean? And now that the internet is a thing, like education uh, is a lot more accessible, uh, or I'll call it private ed education, right? So like you can learn from, you know, Warren Buffett outside of reading his, you know, books on investing or, you know, other filmmakers, you can learn how they do what they do from short form content. And it's like this new way of like consuming education, but you have to be careful about the education that you consume. Yeah. But I almost, I argue that point a little bit because it, this is where it gets tricky because Warren Buffett's probably not on there on IG making the content, but somebody's using his examples. Sure. So they're putting their opinion and so that's why our, some of this false information, like right. Warren Buffett did it like well, this, even watching you should do it clips, like this. Right? You should go into $2 billion yeah. dollars worth of debt to establish your financial freedom. Right. You know, and you're just going, dude, I like, yes, this is the way. And right. Like, okay. Unpack. Like I need more yeah. info on the moves and strategy on this. Sure. Well, and I, I mean, even just like, <laughs> you know, if you, you, if you have access to certain interview clips and if you have access to certain people who want to be, you know, spreading their education, like a lot of people's mission on social is to create value add content where they are giving the value that they feel they can provide and sharing it with the world for free, or they're creating entertainment and the entertainment is like a monetary driver or, you know, they're building a platform to then use it, utilize it for monetary gain down the road. I got to get, I got to get, uh, dirty okay. real quick. Do you think anybody is out there? And, and I don't know. This is, um, I'm not sure the answer. Spit it out. <laughs> but do you think anybody is out there giving freely the education without so some sort of ROI plan, some sort of gain, right? Think about it. Like all these people out there that are providing like, yeah, I agree. Like I've learned things from right. different people, but maybe it's just me. I'm very critical and, and I'm market thinking driven. And so I'm going, all right, what's your, what's your end game here? What's yeah. your strategy for this post? Yeah. yeah I mean, if I, I put it this way, I think most of the people that are pursuing value add content have something to gain from doing so, right? Yeah. Like creating an audience is one of the biggest assets that, you know, you can have in this day and age because you can monetize attention mm -hmm. and you can sell, you know, your program, your books, your course, your whatever. Um, or just having an audience of a certain size allows you to be in certain rooms or to get certain um, access to other things, even if it's not like direct ROI, it's indirect ROI through, you know, and you know, brand equity, brand right? equity, go, right? Oh, this guy's got a hundred thousand followers. He must really know. Yeah, what he's doing, and right? so it's really about capturing attention mm -hmm. that you can then monetize. Because I don't think there's a lot of people out there that are trying to build, you know, a, a social like a short form social platform that they're not monetizing, you know, on on the back end through some through some method. Um, right. And so I think that's important to think about. Everybody has yeah. got a motive, even when they're giving, even us, when we're given free content out, right. right. Free value adds, there's always a motive to it, right? What is the end game? And so, and, and I'm not saying that's bad, like, right? That's, that could be good in some totally. situations. Like we're trying to build a network of filmmakers and provide value to them, totally. right? but we want more followers. We want more people to follow the show, right? Cause we want 
all the work that we're doing right. in this to be uh, valued right. and received. Uh, and so, you know, and it, I, I guess that's why you have to analyze like, okay, why, for me, I always go, why are they creating this kind of content? Can I trust the person, right? Is, are they an expert in the field? How do I know? And then also I'm one of those people that are like, you know, I don't want to just believe the first thing that I hear from them. Right. And I go, okay, I need to go look this up. Is this, is this uh home loan the, the right thing to do? Or is this, totally. uh, you know, debt versus um, income ratio correct? Or is this filmmaking technique, you know, something that's yeah. really valuable? But, you know, I go to like uh, my daughter watches uh, Miss Rachel, right? And so like, I don't even know what that is. <laughs> so Miss Rachel is like, you know, just the iconic uh, her and Mr. Blippy. Wow. I'm, we're probably going to lose a lot of audience here. They, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Blippy. Mr. Blippy. Oh, you got to hear my daughter say Blippy oh, too. Man. It's adorable. Okay. She's, you know, almost two. Anyways, but they make just content for kids right yeah. and they try to make it educational i think so those parents are like oh yeah my kid could watch this you know stuff on tv so i can have a 30 minute break to finish the house cleaning right yep so the uh but then i go okay they're providing entertainment they're trying to provide value for parents so that they don't feel bad that you know we're letting them watch you know just garbage on right. the screen so there's value to it but at the end of the day theirs is entertainment they want to build that audience so that then they can get monetization and make money because yeah they can't even if miss rachel started it out of the goodness of her heart because she's a teacher that's her thing like she's a teacher she wants to create content um uh for children and that's great but she can't do that without getting compensated, right? Yeah. Like it's got, she's got to have some sort of ROI at the end. And now she, I mean, she makes millions, bro. That's so sick. Blippi is her. like one of the, one of the highest paid like YouTube. I know Blippi is just a wow. fun word to say, but dude, they, they make tons of money. Um, and, uh, you know, the content it's, you know, it's, it's, it is what it is, but it's, it's for a two year old and, man. And long form. Yeah. 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 There's an audience out there for it and they are monetizing it and it's right. like, you gotta, you gotta respect it. Right. But you know, at the end of the day, it's all, it's changing how we as filmmakers do our job. Yeah. And so, you know, just diving into like the business side of it, right. As a production company, how have you seen short form content change the way that as a production company, you have to operate? If you want it specifically to us, I'll start there. Um, Cause I've seen trends in the industry too. Yeah. But for us, I think one of the funniest things that I've had is well, one, yes, our clients are asking us for short form right. content, right? Um, we're going after clients that want short form content. We're offering that as a, a product or service. We're not just, you know, we're story driven creatives, right? So I like creating story driven, uh, whether it's non-scripted, like interview based, where we're piecing together testimonials or content from someone and then putting it with beautiful cinematography from my boy Joey over here or somebody from our team. And then, uh, you know, scripted, right? Like we love that stuff, but we understand that our clients do want this social content top of mind, right? And so yeah. from a brand, it might look like, you know, 30 second reels. Um, you know, we created like stop animation videos of a shoe right. coming together, right? Those are fun, fun things. Then we've got influencers, you know, clients that um, have a personal brand or a service that they need to represent themselves as the expert on, right? So then they'll just give a hot take, a hot topic, their opinion or, or a fact of in their industry to set their status of, hey, I'm the expert. So when you think of um, a home loan or buying a car or a cleaning service, you're going to think of me, right? Yeah. Whatever their industry is. And so we've been asked to make that content. We do create the content. Um, and then we also, you know, create it for ourselves um, internally because we see that it is a successful way of um, attracting an audience, yeah. like you said, right? The attention of those you might need. Um, but as far as probably the funniest thing I've seen is sometimes even on our commercial projects, like our big budget, like broadcast or um, even, uh, you know, some of the, the stuff that goes straight to YouTube or, or yeah. their website, they're like, hey, let's not make it look high quality. Yeah. And that's what we're getting to. It's changing the industry because they go, you know what? People really respond to the organic 
post, yeah. like the crappier the video looks, actually the better engagement. What's crazy is, so we've had clients that have come to, well, to to me during a, uh, like a consultation on like how they should create like social content. Mm. And what I tell everybody is you should have a mix of highly produced professional content and a mix of like iPhone phone, mm -hmm. just content because phones create relatability, but professional camera work creates credibility mm -hmm. and the mix of both. When you go to a page, it allows your audiences to relate to those videos but also they see that you're putting out credible work and the more that you build that social equity the more that you have you know social credibility if you will um and it's it's like when you go and especially for a business or uh, an individual like entrepreneur or something when you go and look them up you're going to immediately get a feel for what kind of person they are based on their social media activity yeah. um and it's like a necessary thing that has to be done but it's also watering down what we do or i don't even want to say watering down but it's created a new art form of making successful um, short form video content because the way that we do you know cinematography doesn't sell to a short form audience, uh, even myself, like a lot of times when I'm on social, I'm not consuming, um, you know, highly produced commercial. I'm just not like it. I love making them, but I don't consume them when I'm on a social media platform like that, uh, unless it is educational from someone who I already respect or they've found a way to be entertaining and hook me in the first second. Mm -hmm. um, but it's mm -hmm. just a different climate, man. I, I think too, you touched on it and we've, like, so we run some ad campaigns for our clients too. Yeah. And we always AB test, you know, and what we find, it depends though, because I think you have to look at w whether the organic or the, the high quality yeah. plays best. And we've seen it go both ways. Um, usually a cold audience, like an audience that doesn't know who you are, responds better to an organic type video, right? In an ad campaign, it's like, because it stands out, they're like, whoa, like what is this crappy ad? It's kind of funny. It was creatively done and they get engaged and they have engagement with it. Yeah. And then you do a retargeting campaign and that's where you do a really high polished video because then they go, oh, wow, but these guys know what they're doing. Yeah. There is like, they're, or, they're authentic, they're not scared to right. show like their true self, right? That's how they found me and hooked me. And then, wow, they are like, they know what they're doing. They're very polished, right? And so like there's this double layer effect. But then I think it also works in reverse sometimes too. You almost want to, depending on your industry or who your target audience is, even more importantly, you might want a super high polished first video cold, right? Because think about like if I was trying to sell you something film related, you know, would you respond to something that's very cinematically like I haven't seen a very cinematic engaging ad on social in a really long time. Yeah. And so I think it's really oversaturated um, going towards the trend of like, let's do everything iPhone and like, let's do it all, uh, you know, try to look like we're not putting any effort yeah. to it. So I would say I, I think and I'm hoping that there's going to be a new trend of like, maybe we can come back to some high quality cinematic yeah. content. And they, they are there. Sure. They, there are some out there depending on what products you look for. Right. Um, but I think it depends on your audience. It does. You have to know your audience and what they're going to engage with Gen Z. And even a lot of us millennials, like we're tired of being sold to. Right. So we don't respond to paid ads a right. lot very well. You know, it really does have to hook us in the first one to two seconds. And that's where I think story is king. 100%. You know, it's like, so it could be cinematic or it could be super organic, but you got to hook them with something at the beginning that makes me stop scrolling. Absolutely. One of the other things too, going back a little bit that I've seen work quite well is a blend between, uh, you know, non-polished videos and polished videos creating like this hybrid product together. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of times, especially in the filmmaking space, you'll see like, 
you know, short form content, like the setup that was done on an iPhone and then like the shot, or you see, I, I saw uh, an ad that Shaq put out recently and it was like this super cool, like polished edited thing. And then jumped like right into like a zoom interview of him where he's doing like the a roll over zoom, but like it just had this hybrid of both. So you got like the relatable and the credible both in one piece. Um, and so depending on like what you're doing, like you can weave in some iPhone video stuff with really cinematic or polished other video and kind of create this hybrid blend of both. And I think that's a good way to capture a lot of, you know, a lot of the audiences mm. that are out there. Yeah. Um, but again, it all goes back to the targets that you're pursuing. Yeah. I think standing out, just being different, yeah. you know, like one of the it's so hard though, bro. It's it is. saturated. You, and like, you, and soon as crazy. you are different, you're going to be copied. Yeah. And then you need to repivot and be different, different again. Yeah. It's like a never ending that it, it, that's what I feel like social or short form content is. It's a never ending marathon. So I heard a quote recently uh, that said creating short form content is the new rat race. Mm. And it's like one of these things that it's like everybody is doing it all the time. There's no way to truly automate it. You know, um, it, it's just a never ending rat race that like all of us are caught up in. Mm. And it's just difficult, man. Like it wears on you just like the constant need to feel like you have to post once a day or five times a week and then you have to post on your story three times a week just to you know make sure this imaginary algorithm doesn't blacklist you and it's just exhausting to keep up with but it's also necessary in today's climate bro or bella put that on a t-shirt and i'm gonna wear that something like what did you say it was? Social media is the new rat race. Bro. Oh, it's great. I want a little rat with like mm -hmm. all the social icons <laughs> around it. Make it happen somewhere yeah, and man. I'll wear it. It's crazy. So true. No, that's great. I, You know, and that's the thing. It's like, I think we, it sounds like we're talking negative, but it, like you right. said, it's like a necessary evil. It, it's it's good and, and bad. It, it has changed our, our um, e even some of our clients that were doing yeah. high-end stuff. Now they, you know, they want to do some of that kind of content. But, you know, I think it's like the AI stuff. You know, it's like, it's just another tool. And do you want to be a specialist in that right. area? Right. And so I think going back to your question, you know, we talked about how it's it impacted us and we're kind of in the middle of, you know, it is one of our product lines. We do offer it. But I think the trend I've seen with a, every production company, and again, this is this is where I think uh, the oversaturation is happening again on that level from a client side um, from content creators just popping up everywhere, yeah. anybody with an iPhone and, you know, and Hey, I'm good on social and they can create a whole business, which is awesome that they yeah. can do it. And they are great at it. You know, there's people that you don't maybe need a media company. You just need a, a content creator that right. is really dope at social content. Yeah. Right. And so, but I've seen a lot of media companies, even us, we're, we're guilty as well. Uh, add this service on, right? Like, Oh yeah, we can, we can create short form content. Like we are, we're content creators, we're storytellers, we're cinematographers, and we can we can create that. And so, you know, I think with us, what sets what makes us different is we're trying to find that how to, a, a way to be unique in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, and I'm sure everybody is right. Like, how can your is it your style of editing right that makes you stand out? Is it your storytelling or your strategy or like your product offering to your client? Are you just doing production? Are you offering branding, consultation? Right production and then distribution like how many branches of what is needed are you offering you know are you full service part service um and i think i think that's uh it's changing the landscape at least in the corporate and commercial space totally. of companies clients and even careers uh, especially on careers because content creators are now like their whole a whole separate industry uh just recently like uh, I was talking with someone the other day about this, but they're like, even in the wedding space, like wedding mm. films are being replaced with content creator like highlights. And so now there are like wedding film content creators that they're hired alongside or in place of a wedding filmmaker. And their job is just to create reels of their day. 
Dude, I'm so I'm in so many forums yeah. for like weddings and commercial <clears throat> brands or commercial videographers. Right. And I see that request all the time. Hey, I'm looking for a content creator to come out or like, hey, it's a DJ. And they totally. had a content creator come create content for them. And the videographers, you know, complaining about right. like this content creator was there and getting in my shot, you know, all that stuff. Yeah. But dude, it's so true. Um, it is it is a new position. It's a new thing. It's here, you know, whether you like it or not. Yeah. And uh, I don't know though, man. I look at it and I go, I see value. Like it's it's pretty instantaneous. Totally. Like you think about a wedding film, you know, if you're fast, it's two weeks or like there's some day of editors. If you're slow, it's like, you know, 90 days, whatever. But con like content creators, I remember this from your wedding actually. Uh, your photographer, and you know, they're photographers, but they yeah. posted like a little Instagram reel that night from the reception i was like oh dude that's dope that's yep. cool you get to relive it and it's like there's no pressure for it to be like high quality no nope. it's just like sharing a fun moment that they did for you on top of photography that was kind of like oh dude that's cool like totally. we were all having a good time and it's like instant you could relive absolutely and, and i believe that's kind of what everybody you know that's what social right. is it's like instant gratification and right. so you know, I see that there's value. In fact, if I could have it go back, I'd probably want a content creator. I can't Honestly. believe I'm saying that. But I think I want a content creator. I would still want the wedding yeah. videographer, the team, but I'd want a content creator there right, too. Right, Just so you have all these little bits and pieces and you can relive it like, you know, that week. Yeah. And I mean, literally that night they had, I think that video up and it was like, wow, this is cool. I still remember the song that they played to it. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, there's just... You know, while it is exhausting to keep up with, like when you're in our position and you can't just like, quote unquote, hire the production company to, you know, handle it and whatnot, like there is an immense amount of value to it. And that's why I said it's a necessary evil, because while it's exhausting from, you know, a standpoint of keeping up with it, especially when you have multiple clients that you're creating, you know, stuff for, uh, dude, the content creation space is like, it's a hustle, yeah. uh, whether you're, you know, making it or, you know, you are the guy that it's getting made for. Um, it's just a hustle to keep up how, with. Bro. How many do you think, and maybe our audience, if you're listening, comment if you're a content creator, but Joey, how many clients do you think a content creator could handle at one time? Because it is exhausting. I mean, it probably depends yeah. on how much assets you're putting out. But yeah. I mean, we have several clients, We even between our company, we put out 45 short form assets a month. Yeah. So we're like, we're doing a lot of client work for ourselves totally. between our three um, brands, the Rough Cut Club, the wedding films and our commercial uh, mm -hmm. company. But like, how, where, where do they max out at? Like, can you imagine being a content creator and being like, yeah. you know, especially if you're a one man band type deal. I mean, you know, for some people, it's one person. Mm. For for a lot of people, it's one person. Because if mm. you're going to create content, um, if you're going to create it for like one post a day, mm. you know what I mean? Like you're shooting something, you're editing it, you're distroing it that day. It's like, it's hard without a team that you can scale mm -hmm. to keep up with you know, more than one to two people per person. But to that point, if you're new in the industry, like you can get one client that totally secures the bag for you, like and 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 gives you a, a new career nowadays, and people are hiring it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's a good place to practice too, even though maybe it's not uh, as cinematic. But you could work those in, and and you're learning. Man, when I did going back to we were talking about this pre-show, yeah. but. You know, back in the day when I was doing eHow and I was making $35 a video, you know, it was a grind. I had to do 100 videos a month, you know, yeah. the whole thing to like make a money enough to pay bills back in the yeah. you know, early 2000s. And uh, and it's like, dude, that that um, that mentality, you have to figure out formulas and it's very valuable. It taught us how to formulate things for our product lines now. Yeah. So we're efficient with our quality, right? And our, our pricing is, you know, our quality and pricing has evolved. So I think it's a great s spot to start in a career. 100%. As a freelancer, if you're green, you don't have any experience or not a lot of experience, you can, you're going to be shooting constantly. You're going to be editing constantly. You're going to be figuring out new ways to tell story 
new ways to stand out in a crowded yeah. market space. Um, and you're going to figure out formulas. And I, I think that's one of the, the beautiful things about it. Cause at the end of the day with short form content, you're, your goal is to tell a really short story, right? Mm. Um, and you're you're learning how to have a beginning, middle, and end, or or whatever there is, um, or or just like a piece of a story that's enough for someone to grasp onto. And I think that it is revolutionizing the way that stories are being told. Mm. Um, and I think that the really successful content creators or social media you know, people in the social media space are the ones that are learning to tell stories in a unique way. And honestly, I think it's making a lot of filmmakers uncomfortable because it's not how they've told stories before. Mm. And it's it's how stories are being told now and they're, you know, old souls and I'm just as guilty, but I'm also a consumer of short form content. But it is... It is the new way that stories are being told, you know, yeah. and it's just, or different different ways that right. are being told. And I hate, but also it works. Though the one way where it's like you watch the whole video and it's like, all right, tune in for part two to find out how it. And you're like, dang, this is like a reality or like an yeah. episodic content. But I see what you're doing. Like right. you're getting better right. algorithm rating because now I'm watching multiples of your videos. Totally. And it's so annoying though. But it's just like a new way that people are pushing, you know, yeah. the industry and and it's it's kind of been like this natural evolution. Um, you know, I think back even when I was in high school, like nobody cared this much. Nobody cared as much as everyone, you know, does now. Um and it will be interesting to see, you know, how this ages and like you know, fast forward 10, 15 years, like what social media looks like. Mm. What, what do you think? How, how do you think the, how do you think it's going to evolve like over the next several years? I mean, obviously it's just speculation, but what, what do you, how do you really see short form content evolving? You know, I see that it's oversaturated already. Mm -hmm. So when there's oversaturation, then you have to stand out. So yeah. I think there's going to be this push for, being different and standing out and because otherwise you're not going to get results like right. eventually it's just there's so much noise and data there that you know it's like youtube right if you were at the beginning of youtube you've got this these people that have huge followings because they were there first right right, right. So that's that's the, similar to some social but then you have people that have dropped in really stood out in their industry or the way they're telling stories and they pop up and become huge uh, accounts yeah. right they built that audience. They built that attention um, asset. But I think eventually, like then people are going to copy those and there's going to be right. lookalikes. And then there's just, you know, think about even some of our clients, like we've seen uh, the home loan industry, like get in social. And uh, one of our clients was early in on that and has a nice following. But now there's tons yeah. of people on there, right? And so I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know if... Um, I don't know if it's going to be as valuable because uh, think about YouTube as well. Like it's, it's going to be, it's going to be harder to be valuable for people. Yeah. You're going to have to invest longer at it. And I think a lot of people are wanting that instant, like, I want to get in. I want to like, let's do a six month retainer. And I expect to have, you know, a great following by the end of it. And, and it's just not the case now. It can be, you can hit some winners, you know, but it's you got to stand out, and I think that window is gonna constantly be shrinking. Yeah. Um. There's always new ways to do things, right? Right. I also think AI is gonna take a, a big impact. You know, we had our Sora episode. Yeah. I think AI is gonna totally change the short form game, right? Like, what if you're just what if you are turning it into a system and it's pumping out content? But then is that just noise? Like you're just hitting algorithms to feed maybe your fan base that's already there. But then are you going to start losing that fan base? So I don't know, man. I don't. I don't have a good answer. Yeah. I'm curious what you think, but I. I don't. I see it. I see it not looking good. I mm -hmm. guess um, in the long run for for the advantage of people. Yeah. Like I think you need to be earlier on, or you have to be really creative in the yeah. way you're going to utilize it. Otherwise, you're going to be treading water for a long time. Yeah, I, I definitely think that it's going to get more competitive. Um, I mean, it's already like it's cutthroat, bro. Everyone's pursuing yeah. the same stuff. Um, 
But, you know, I, I do see that, like, historically speaking, it has always evolved. And I think a new platform will arise that does it differently. Um, I mean, even like TikTok, right? Like, so TikTok came out um, and, you know, there was Snapchat, there was... Uh, I mean, Instagram Vine, point man, Vine, bro, Vine. and like, uh, which is basically what TikTok right. is, right? But I think that you know, there's so much like, there's so many people that are coming out with new ideas, and then like the big man just rips off a piece of it and does it, you know, a little bit differently. But I do think that there will be a new innovative way to create content mm. in the future. Is the big man Zuckerberg? Big man Zuckerberg, okay. for sure. I just, I wanted to clarify. He owns Facebook and Instagram, so it's right, like right. he's the big man. TikTok comes out, and then it's like, oh, we do reels over here. Right, and, and now, story, oh, you know. and yeah, I Snapchat mean, YouTube's stories. doing it now and everything. Uh, vanish sure. mode. You, you yeah. got it, bro. And so I think that there's going to be a new way um, with technology, you know, whether that's AI, whether that's, honestly, even phones being able to document reality in a new way. Mm. Um that I think eventually people will migrate to. Um, but I, I do see, you know, the social network thing never going away. Um, I see it being different. And at this point in time, like everyone realizes the need for it. Um, but I just, I just, I think that there'll be a new way of doing things. And I mean, like even, you know, TikTok has, TikTok shook up the music industry, like really heavy Mm. and like, because of short form TikTok stuff, now music videos are a dying industry. You know what I mean? Um, and I think that the more that time evolves in the short form space, the more that other industries will be sadly, you know, diminished, but new ones will pop up because of it. So, yeah, no, I think that's good. Dude, let's unpack the music thing. Cause yeah. I think that's probably other filmmakers that are listening to this have experienced that too, but that's a client base that have come, has come to us with different requests. Right. Right. It's like, no, nah, we don't want to make a full music video. We just want to make a, like a, a visualizer or like, I just need the, the loop for Spotify. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm going to drop something on Instagram. Um, yeah. And I know you love music videos. I bro. love I them, lo- bro. I, I love, you them. love making them. I love concepting them with you. I love watching them. Yeah. Uh, MTV fan back in the day, you know, could just sit there and watch VH1 or MTV, just watch music videos back to back to back. MTV jams, man. They used to be just looped in my background all the time, bro. Yeah. Childhood, childhood memories. Yeah. What do you think about the whole uh, music industry shift? Does it make you sad? It makes me sad, but I get it. Like if I was an independent music artist, I would be putting all my money into making short form content over making highly produced music videos. Mm. And that sucks. But it would, I mean, at the end or like, you know, in today's day and age, people want to sign artists that have a fan base already Mm -hmm. and it's not like oh you guys are so talented we want to sign you guys it's like you guys clearly can't capture an audience thus we don't care to sign you Mm -hmm. um, even if your music is amazing Mm -hmm. and so that's where it goes to attention being like the bigger asset and it's just easier to capture you know if i had a a five thousand dollar budget for a music video how much content could i create for $5,000 that helps spread my music versus putting it all into one video that goes on YouTube and now you're back to making a new asset. Mm. And it's like you you can create at scale in the short form space and stretch the dollar further and that's why it's like, it sucks for us that love making that art but the accessibility to creating and building an audience is in the short form space hmm. all day long. Dude, you know you just brought up another thing that I think we should talk about and uh and I actually have to fill you in on something cuz it's Uh-oh. it's a client but it's a um U- UGC user generated content. Yeah. And that is uh, I've seen that on TikTok with like even bands and music like right yep. like somebody like somebody's listening to the song or like doing a duet or something right um and they or like they're it's a dance to that beat to that song that stuff goes viral right it's trendy it's like oh there's something you can participate participate in but other people are creating content for you now because they're using your song so um yeah we had a a client recently you know there was like this 
product launch. I'm like, all right, we got some great shots. We're going to do some footage. Um, they're like, no, we're actually pausing. We're going to do all UGC on that content wow. for this year. Um, cause that is what's getting the most results. Wow. And again, it's that attention. It's that audience thing. You go, yeah. Oh man. And so I'm like, dude, yeah, that's, it's smart. And your UGC campaign is, is brilliant. You know, like getting people to shoot content, post content that highlights your brand. And, uh, it's a thing. So I think being a strategist now is super important yeah. as a media company. Like how can you provide that value and say, you know what, uh, this is how we can make your song potentially go viral, right? Have you thought about this X, Y, Z thing, making it a dance or making yeah. it a trend, you know, something that people can get behind and interact with. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think that's the future too right now is, is interactive short form content. Like it, I think all short form content needs to encourage engagement. Mm. What advice would you give to somebody who is trying to jump into the short form content creation space right now in today's day and age? Hmm. That's number one, like get engagement with your post, ask questions, have people make people feel like their participation and whatever your post is, is providing value. Yeah. Not just like which frame do you like better top or bottom right like yeah. and we post we're guilty we posted those but it's like you know they they don't really feel like their opinion right. matters in that but uh have them engage in some way where they feel like they're providing value or making a difference silly example i'm going to share it i know i've shared it before i shot uh, the cats. these cats in my oh backyard my these kittens and i posted like help me name these two cats bro i got the you know the it wasn't super viral. It got like yeah. 30,000 views, but it had like, I don't know, thousands of comments. Everybody wanted to name the cats and find out updates on the cats, right? Yeah. Like they felt like they had value into the story of that post. Right. So I'd say that. And then the second thing, start now, like just start shooting. Yeah. Like you don't, you need to practice, you know what I mean? And there's no... Uh, I think Gary Vee says it, like you, you can always archive a post. You can right. always take it down. Like put it up there, take chances too. I would say, I think a lot of times we struggle with this too. It's like, oh, we don't want to, we don't want to present this. Cause it, it's like, dude, post it because it probably doesn't matter if it goes viral. Awesome. If it's bad, take it down. Right. Like, so I think be willing to take, shoot some shots yeah, um, and not be <clears throat> too worried about uh, um, the repercussions of like, is it quality enough? Obviously like, is it true? Is it uh, authentic to you? Right. Like, I think those things need to be considered for sure. Yeah. Um, what about you, man? Like, what would you say to somebody? Uh, what do they need to do to get started on yeah. social content? I think that one of the biggest things that I have noticed is that apart from the value add space, people want to follow somebody that they like and that they connect to. Mm. And the more that you can make people connect with you as a person over even the value that you're bringing to the table. Like there's gotta be a balance of both. But if all you're doing is creating content that is like, this is how you win in this industry and da 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 da, and this is what works, but nobody knows who you are, then they're gonna have a hard time like following you for the long term. Mm -hmm. But there's people that I look up to and admire and respect them as people. and it, like all of their content I consume because I like them mm -hmm. as a as a person. And so I think that the more transparent you can be with letting people into who you are as a person, um, you know, there's a cringy and not cringy way to do that. But I think the the people that are really succeeding in the space are letting people into their world. Um, and that's what I really help helps that's what i really think helps people stand out what about uh what about brands how does that apply to brands you think mm, that's a good question yeah um i watched a i watched a, again this is a feature length thing but i watched a documentary recently um called unbroken mm -hmm. um i think I, sh I shared it with you and you've seen it but it was all about this um <clears throat> this olympic snowboarder that got in this really terrible accident and then uh we saw 
um, the company that sponsors him, the snowboard company that sponsors him, go and like visit him and be there for him and be, you know, caring about their people outside of just like, you know, the activity that they're doing in the world. And I think that like when you get to see, you know, into a like what a company believes in and how they operate behind the scenes, um, you're kind of getting into like buying into their brand right mm. and it's like oh this company stands for something that i can get behind and i think it's very admirable how they conduct themselves and do business outside of just the products that they create mm. and so i think that as a company when you can let people in on you know the stuff that you're doing that you're not necessarily trying to broadcast like you know, we are these great American people because we do all these things. It's like, no, like, you know, this is just something that's important to us and this is who we are. Mm -hmm. People are going to grab onto that and recognize you. You know, how many times have you heard like um, an older generation, you know, figure say, oh, yeah, I don't like that music artist. Like I saw them, you know, say this and uh, act a fool on this uh, award show or I don't like that actor because I saw you know, this behind the scenes video of them treating the crew horribly. And it's like the, uh, like, like even Will Smith right now, man, like he's having such a hard time with so many people like wanting to cancel him over what happened at the award show that, um, it makes it difficult for him, you know, to keep the same audience he once had. And I think that applies to business. Like when you're out here doing things, whether you're acting a fool or doing stuff that people can really grab onto and respect you for, it's going to help people care about you as a brand. Yeah. Authenticity. That's it. Yeah. Transparent. That's good. Engagement. Authenticity. Be transparent. Yeah. Man, that's, that's all good stuff. Dude, it's, uh, yeah. it's the, it's the, uh, I wouldn't even say it's the future. It's already been here right. for a while now. And I, I will say, don't you feel like COVID 2020 mm. was a huge spike? For all mm. of this, because I think TikTok like kind of really hit the states right around that time as well. Yeah. I could be off on my on my data, but I think it's around that time when because uh, I remember getting TikTok and being like, "Yeah, this is stupid, but so fun to doom scroll and right. like share right. these videos with my buddies that I you know we're all locked yeah. in." But uh, I feel like it has been a boom since twenty twenty, totally. right? Yeah, and I think I think the. I think the market will correct a little bit in the space um, because of how saturated it yeah, is. Like yeah. I'm seeing like even the younger generation than us aren't really on Instagram as much as, you know, they are TikTok and um, Snapchat. Right. And yeah. it's just like, there are these different age groups of people that are in these different platforms. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think that like, because of the oversaturation, I have seen a shift in people like being like, dude, like I'm over it. Like mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't feel connected to people anymore because of it, because it's all someone trying to sell me or whatever. And so, you know, I think there will be a correction in just interest mm -hmm. um, in the future. But at, at the current moment, it's like, it's the hot thing that you got to do, man. Yeah. All right. Are you guilty of doom scrolling? Yeah, I am. And I and, and that's the thing, you know, it's like social media almost comes with this like negative connotation for me where it's like I need to be on it less, mm -hmm. but I have a need to create more of it at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's like I need to be making content for other people to consume so that they can feel worse about the pr productivity in their lives. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my gosh, that's this a is a great analogy. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Yeah. That's why it's like this necessary evil because it's like got all this value and it's so important. But at the same time, everybody wants to do less of it because they're addicted and can't stop like wasting time watching stuff that most of the time doesn't matter that much. Dude, I literally text my wife this morning. Yeah. And I apologize for doom scrolling last night because mm. I've been I was sick this past weekend. Yeah. And when you're sick, like you're watching movies, you're you know, you're on social. Yeah. Right. And then I realized that it carried over a day and like, you know, the next day I was like, what am I doing? Like this, this is an addiction. Yeah. I'm literally just like be present, do things, yeah. you know what I mean? And you go, you know, and I was like, honey, I'm sorry. Like I totally realized last night I was doom scrolling and was not present 
and we're going to lock the phones up. You know what yeah. I mean? It's, it's a, uh, so I'm with you. It's, you know, it's, it's great sometimes, you know, it's, right. it's great. But then other times, uh, you know, definitely have been guilty of, of doing the doom yeah. scroll. And to me, it's like, you know, sometimes you use it for entertainment. Right? right. And I think that's great. Sometimes you use it for education. You are following people that totally. you, you know, trust their value, their opinion. And then other times you use it almost as a crutch. Right. Yeah. It's just like this, because uh, I it's think it's a way to escape. It's a way to escape, and so when we're stressed, or when we're sick, or when we're bored, or when we're angry or sad, and we want to feel a different emotion, yeah, you know, and you and you go to this device because it's releasing dopamine. Yeah, when you have these experiences, right, and it, all different types of chemicals are released because you're not only receiving um, like you're laughing and, and enjoying things. But think about on the other side, like when you're yeah. post, when you get like a thousand likes and like a bunch of comments, like how does that make you feel? You yeah. Know? And when you want to go read all those and respond, you know, and, yep. or somebody says something negative on your, on your feed and you yeah. let that affect you. Yeah. Man, that's a, that's a whole nother episode. Mm. See, it gets too uh, deep, but there's a, the mental health that comes with, yeah. associated with all of yeah. the social media stuff and yeah. yeah man speaking of will smith and like you know he had totally. a lot of lots of backlash online and brands brands can live and die by you know how they post and and things that they allow I mean, to be budweiser posted. like yeah. budweiser got like hard roasted yeah. yeah roasted yeah man so it, it's tough you just got to be careful how you utilize it and how you you know move on it but um at the end of the day, it just comes with so many pros. Like we're connected. We oh. have an opportunity to build a platform and an audience and businesses and, and all of this stuff. But there are some negatives that come with it that you got to be aware of. And, yeah. um, you know, I know we are, we probably got to wrap this yeah. up, but I want to know, um, just a couple of, I'll say rapid fire. Yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, and we'll yeah. see if we make it through, but favorite platform <clears throat> currently, what's your favorite platform that you consume the most, uh, short form content it's right now it's it's instagram for me mm. um i think that i like the youtube platform the best um but i don't have i just don't consume as much of it as i would like but when i get on there i think the content that i actually consume on there is some of my favorite <clears throat> content um <clears throat> it's typically very well thought out it's uh more informative it's more in depth um and long form a lot yeah, of times, it's, right? It's I, I'm with you. Form. Like I, I love when I get on YouTube and I have it on the TV yeah. or on my iPad or phone. I'm like, dude, I'm gonna learn something right well, now. Well, and I'm more I'm gonna intentional. Be yeah. I'm more intentional yeah. about what I click on to so watch, true. and and I think that is uh, something where like I almost never regret my time watching YouTube videos. Mm. It's more so like Instagram yeah. and. Like I, I'm, it's a doom scroll. I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not on TikTok like almost at all. I what this is hilarious, and I'm actually really glad I'm doing this right now. Um, where's my TikTok app? I don't even know where it is on my phone. I'm gonna open it up right now. You're gonna have a bunch of videos that I sent you. Yeah. So right now I have um sixty. No, I have over a hundred DMs from p video p like people sharing videos with me yeah. that uh I have not watched and I think you almost have like 80 videos that you've sent me that I have yet to watch <laughs> <laughs> so note to Shane just send him the link outside of TikTok yeah, got it yeah, all right yeah. yeah yeah text me the link and I'll probably watch it yeah. um but I just don't open TikTok yeah. and so like I I have like 150 videos that people have sent me that I haven't watched yeah don't don't hit up Joey on TikTok he's just gonna never answer you hit me no up lie. on IG or anything else <laughs> <laughs> that's but, good yeah. man what about you uh dude tiktok actually is my guilty pleasure and it's so like yeah. i used to watch this sounds so boomer but i used to watch the news like during my lunch break right which is wow. horribly short like 15 20 minutes and it's garbage but it was like you know i it was a way for me to turn off my brain from thinking yeah. about like i'm constantly pro problem solving or strategizing and so like i have to stop and like hey eat like do something different right yeah. and working out is a great way to do that right? right get to the gym and uh and so tiktok is my total it's my distraction yeah bro. and so and you know i guess the 
the people in China have understood what I watch enough now. So I get like all these comedians, I get film stuff. Yeah. Um, I get some political stuff mixed in there. I don't know how it gets in. And, uh, and I get like these, you know, these funny skits and stuff. And yeah. so I'm able to turn off my problem solving brain. And so that's, but when I find a video that I'm like, dude, this is actually funny or well done. This could serve our clients well or us well. That's when I sent you a, yeah. a, a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it is wildly impressive how like on point the algorithm is though in continuing to feed you content that you will consume. Oh yeah. Like I look at all the stuff that I follow and like that pops up just, and it's like, this is for me and yeah. they've got it figured out. It's really, yeah. really wild. But anyway. All right. all right. My last out of my rapid, okay. my two round rapid fire, unless you can think of a third, but uh, <laughs> Hit me with it, bro. Uh, wh who's your favorite person to follow mm. right now? Not of all time, yeah. but right now, where are you like digging the content that you're, you know, who's who's your hot take right now? Yeah, I mean, for a long time, you know, I I have, uh, I have just been a big fan of the buff nerds and the content that they create. Um, and we just had Tom Totter on the podcast yeah, recently. He was awesome, Got man. to talk with him, and he's one of the founders of that. Him and Jacob Owens, they they crush it, man. Like they're in the filmmaking space, like they're some of my favorite filmmaking follows to, mm -hmm. to keep up with. Um, I also, I also, you know, consume a lot of personal development like content as well. Um, and I, I've slowed down on it because I felt like those were some of the people that were just like frustrating me the most. Like they're just, they're just so over the top most of the time. Um, and so I really, I just took a big like step back on them, but like historically I followed a lot of mm. those people. Um, but man, I'll be honest. Red Bull is one of my favorite follows, dude. Nice. Like Red Bull, yeah. like they post, uh, just like the sickest action sports stuff. And if anyone knows me, they know I come from that world. And I just think that what Red Bull is doing, like they're one of my dream clients to work with mm. for sure. Mm. Uh, they're, they're like. I would be hyped and feel like I made it if I got to work with and do a project for Red Bull. But yeah, at Red Bull. Yeah, tag. at Red Bull. Yeah. But what about you, man? Yeah, that's good, dude. I'm kind of with you. I think, uh, you know, I've gone through my phases too, but it, you know, it is kind of people say social media is like your highlight reel, right? Yeah. And that's the thing too. I think even even with these influencers or, or um, value add providers, yeah. after a while, you just kind of go, dude, like it's it's almost like, over information you go man yeah. like this worked for you or this this works for some people and you know i need yeah. to act on this if if i'm going to do this right so definitely i uh, man i love business and entrepreneurship so cody sanchez comes yep. to mind yep. you know i'm i'm all into like what businesses can i buy build or acquire you know and yeah. she's all about the the buying you know boring businesses it's really interesting but same it's kind of like after a while i'm going like look if i'm not going to buy a business right now like I kind of want to just turn right. this off for a bit right. and, and pause on it, you know, or like yeah. when I buy a business, then I'm going to, you know, pause on it. So I'm with you. I think entertainment is what I go yeah. to short form now. Like it is, that's my main goal is like, yeah. what can I find? And now I'm kind of like, I want to go check out Red Bull, you know, right. like I'm typically following, you know, some uh, like comedian channel that has multiple yeah. comedians. Oh, I'll tell you, dude, there's, I can't, I'm embarrassed. I'm sharing this. All right, here you go. So there's, I, the, the, nobody judge me for this, but have y'all heard of, uh, I think her name is Bobby. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, the podcast. Yeah, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, it's hilarious. It's kind of like between She's two so ferns funny, thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You know, and so like, and again, it's like, it's just entertainment for me. Yeah. It's just stupid, mindless entertainment. But the, just the, her delivery and like you know, how people like play yeah. on that, it's kind of like Zach Gil uh, Zach yeah. Galifianakis. Thank you. Yeah, on, yeah, yeah. You know, between yep. two ferns, and it's just like this kind of like dumb unplug like watch this. Yep. Um, and so, and then I like dove, dove into her IG and started watching some of her behind the scenes and yep. be like, okay, who is this person really? Right. Is she funny? Is she real? You know, and and so I think that's my my mo now is that's like, where funny. can I get entertainment from? Yeah. You know, yeah. and so it's a distraction. It's a good way to turn off the brain for a yep. little bit. Um, 
But uh, yeah, less doom scrolling and and maybe more YouTubing. More living your life is you what go. it is. But anyway, bro, good chopping it up with you on uh, short form content. Let's unfortunately keep making more of it, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go, brother. Boom. Thank you guys for joining us today on the Rough Cut Club. One of the biggest ways that you could show us support is to go and leave us a positive review on your podcasting platform of choice. This really helps us to continue creating content, short form content like this for you guys so that you can continue to learn the art and business of filmmaking. If you guys got any comments or any thoughts of your own, please be sure to comment that on our YouTube page or get connected with us on any short form social content platform of your choice. And we'll see you guys next Tuesday at 9 a.m.